with that. That's fine. She is actually here, though. Refuses. Refuses to participate on a mic. All right. Are we doing this? Yep. Yep. Let's do it. Second script, right? Yes. 168. One of these days, we should just not do with the music and just have you guys do a cappella. Oh, I tried to do that last week. You wouldn't do it. Oh, now you'll sing. From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. Broadcasting from the churn, that guy is Dr. Jim Jobin. I'm Nick Tangeman. It's time for some Pod Therapy. I feel like you started taking jokes out of your opening. I I did four episodes ago, and no one said anything, so I'm like, that's a sign. I noticed This it. is no time to joke, Jim. Uh, and Nick knows it. <laughs> Your jokes this were like one of the best show. parts of the show. Oh, I like your jokes. Wow. People yeah. are getting robbed, man. Uh, well, I'll, I don't know. Maybe we'll bring them back. I don't know. It was a solid opening. A solid. See? Now we don't have your opening bit to talk about. No. Now we're just sitting here killing air. Look what well, you've done. It, it was, you broke pod therapy. It you was fool. incredibly stressful. I don't know if you. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you know this no. about me, but I'm not a naturally funny person. Well. So, <laughs> writing one joke a week that was a lot. Is, yeah, yeah, that, that was that was solid. that took a lot out of me. It was nice having yeah. RJ with us because he was just like, yeah, just oh yeah, give me a jump off point and I'll just yeah. finish that up for you. There you oh, go. somebody reminded me on I think it was on Twitter the other day of a, of a great joke that oh I forget which one of us told it. Uh, but it was uh, well, it wasn't me. Woman, no, this is on uh, on ICS. But, uh, uh, but definitely one of, wasn't me. One of us told the joke on there, and it was a uh, woman goes into a gynecologist for the first time, sits down in the chair, gets the legs up in the stirrups, and the doctor says, "Oh my, that's a huge vagina! Oh my, that is a huge vagina!" <laughs> oh, and the woman said, "Well, you don't have to say it twice." And he says, "I didn't." <laughs> 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 Laura, Laura, just Laura, just went, oh. Laura just got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Laura just said, oh, in kind of a disgusted tone. Oh. And then laughed while covering her face. Yes. Ashamed to be laughing at it. Shame. The shame. Oh, well. So, <sighs> got a couple. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, couple things to announce. Yes. We're um, engaged. No. Uh, first, uh, we've got uh, merch madness happening. Merch madness, madness, mad. Right? Uh, because you yeah. don't have to say it twice. <laughs> I didn't. No. <laughs> uh, so if you are a listener of the show and you want to be involved in March Madness, which yeah. starts today, yeah, yeah, um, Thursday when you're hearing this public, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're a Patreon, you got this episode a day early, and boy, is that a good idea? Yeah, because <laughs> because we're not very organized. No, you know what? Smitty sets this up. He's not very God, organized. He's really he dropping should the ball. Know. Damn it, Smitty. He Jeez. should know our recording schedule. I know. He needs to be paying attention, and he needs to be you able know. to get this message out. He thinks just because he writes the checks to finance this thing that he's just off the hook for right. everything else. Yeah. You know, if you're going to produce the show, produce the show. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> get on it. Yeah. Get your team together. Shit or get off the pot. That's right. But don't get off the pot. Don't we get really, off the pot, though. Yeah, we, yeah, we really you, can't, we yeah, we really can't the, afford to keep doing yeah. the show. So stay. <laughs> stay, please. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Smitty is organizing it. But uh, how do they get in, uh, in touch? Uh, I guess just send Smitty us Smitty a... at AOL.com? No. You yeah. know what? Let's just uh, just reach out to us. Go to Patreon.com um, slash therapy. It'll yeah. be a public post. Yeah, okay. we, won't, we yeah. won't hide it. So just go to Patreon.com slash therapy. It'll be in the feed as you're hearing this episode. Uh, we'll post a link that says, hey, if you want to play March Madness with us, jump in. You can make a bracket. And the winner is going to get free merch. Yes. Hooray. Yes. Uh, which leads us to the second thing that we need to announce. Yes. Um, so when we reorganized our Patreon levels, we wanted to offer more things to yeah. the people who support us. Because for a while there, we felt like we weren't offering anything. Nope. Um, so uh, what we decided to do is every quarter... We've got a couple bonus things that we're doing. So once every three months, Jim and I watch a therapy movie, and we record our uh, reaction to it, our, our you commentary. You can watch the movie live with us. Yeah, you it's watch like director's the with us. commentary. Yep. That was fun. It was fun. That was so, really fun. Uh, this quarter, we did What About Bob? What About Bob? Starring <laughs> Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss. And that will be, it's available to Therapo, or sorry, Theradactyls. Is it their pot? Oh, I don't know. This is your bit. I should have looked this up before I, I mean, started talking about it. I, yeah, I feel like it's. Uh, I thought it was pretty broadly available. I think it's their the it's merch their, thing. I'm sorry. It's theropods, theradactyls. Yeah, their producers have access to that. So if you're one of those three levels, 
Uh, that will be going up April 1st. Okay. Or March 31st. Yeah, one of those. I mean, one aren't of they those really two. the same? Pretty much. It's I'll like just, the same It's going to be midnight. It's like the same day. One of those things. Uh, so that'll be up there. Yeah. And then the other thing we're doing is once every three months, if you are a Theradactyl or Theraproducer, your name gets into a drawing. Yep. Uh, you have to be one of those two levels for at least three months yep. to be eligible for the drawing. And All we expenses are going to... paid cruise to the Bahamas. Uh-uh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> are we drawing? <clears throat> yeah, we Ooh. are going to draw. And it's not for that. It's oh. actually just for it's now my gift is going to seem uh, really did crappy. I, did I one up it? Okay. Yeah, you kind of. Yeah. Kind of stepped on it there. It's a it's a pair of shoes. Pair of shoes. Yay. An awesome pair of shoes. Uh, it is an awesome pair of shoes. Th- technically, they're not available in stores. They are not so available. These they're... are as limited edition as you can get when you limit things. They to They only come in baby sizes. In fact, there's only one shoe. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that I... is how exclusive these are. <laughs> I wasn't actually going to say this until. Well, I guess I have to. Now. I had a feeling the size thing was going to be a problem. <laughs> it is. A, it is a problem because <laughs> you only. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. You Did already you? bought them, no, and there's no, no, already no, one no, size. No, 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 okay. no, no. It's not quite that bad. Okay. Uh, but they do only run in, in full sizes. Okay. They don't have half sizes. Okay. Oh, okay. That's okay. not that bad. That's okay. not, it's not so terrible. Bad. That's not I thought, that bad. I thought okay. you were going to say, right. the shoes already exist, and it's a size nine. <laughs> right. And that's it. So you can win them, <laughs> but only some I don't can know wear what them. you're going to do a, with it's them. It's a size Euro nine. It's, it's yeah. like Cinderella. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if your foot fits, you're the chosen one. And hey, guess what? They have no value, so you can't sell them either. They're not available for resale <laughs> so we no have... but there are they, they they're really cool uh we'll have to put a picture up but they are uh kind of chuck taylor like yeah shoes they're canvas shoes and they say pod therapy on the outside good thing because uh, that's the name yeah. of the show yeah but they're really cool like it's not it's not weird if they uh, said joe rogan <laughs> <laughs> the joe rogan experience that's why they're not in the store otherwise we'd be able to sell them yeah. sell the penn and teller yeah, things so. also penn and teller did you hear about this bit oh no. god i shouldn't be plugging it here but it's really they bought all the chris angel cups to sell in their gift shop oh, they did. <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a great idea it's it is it is unclear to me but for some reason chris angel has been doing a massive sale off yeah he's of, doing like an auction oh, interesting yeah. yeah yeah so they bought all of his merch so they could sell it in their shop i mean that's just great <laughs> it's that's, solid. okay it's very cool. solid i love cool. it um yeah so we are going to draw for those shoes so Woo-hoo. in my uh, pod therapy mug here you have names we've got names and in order to get their name in the mug they had to be a sponsor of the show for three months correct Spoiler and laura the names who is definitely in this office is walking over she is dipping her hand into yep. the mug she goose stepped over she is <laughs> oh what is goose she's stepping? don't <laughs> act like you don't know what goose stepping is well, she probably doesn't know the English version of that word. Who is it? Oh, she says, Ooh. Oh, hey. It's our buddy, Robert Brownie Jr. Man. Oh, All right. he deserves it. He does. He He's... does. He literally bought the URL for our merch store. Yeah. And then assigned it to and us. And this I, I, this was not planned. Yeah. It was it not a setup. Just, it was not, not a setup. setup. But you guys would I didn't know understand why she was staring into the mug like that. That was she weird. Was, it's she weird how she pulled it out with her teeth. Yeah. I like the dramatic flair, though. That was pretty cool. So, Ever the uh, showman. So, all right, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, you got, a, you got a pair of shoes coming your way. Yeah. You are the winner. Of the and Laura has drawing. touched a piece of paper with your name on it, so mm. you've got that going for you. Got you. that going. There for you go. You. That's pretty yep. cool. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, Send I'll that mail to that him. to him. Yeah, yeah. throw it in there too. Uh, she's gonna sign that for you. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> She's going to spray a little of her perfume on it, and uh, <laughs> like a, that'll be enclosed like a with the prison shoes. letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to bake you a cake, yeah. and I'm the confident. shoes will be inside of I'm it. I'm confident Kate's cool with all this. <laughs> Are you getting letters from Laura again? No. <laughs> I told you to stop listening to pod therapy. <laughs> I didn't want them. We're done with that show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you friends uh, who have sponsored us at patreon.com slash therapy and if you'd like to be in the next drawing uh, jump on down come join the party we're doing yeah. all sorts of new stuff over there we're doing uh, our movie night which is going to air also I've been doing a monthly interview March's interview was with Devaraj a CFO of a hospital and uh, he unpacked the hospital or healthcare transparency act did a really good job explaining that and also the ins and outs of healthcare finance which is really really cool and uh, in this next month, Nick, in April, we're going to be releasing another interview. And have you decided which one I will be releasing? Let's do the hypnotherapy one. Hypnotherapy. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good one. So over the years, we have had so many questions about hypnotherapy, and I got a hold of a colleague who exclusively does hypnotherapy. 
and we did a great long form interview about it. She explains the theory of it. She explains the actual techniques that she's doing. And now, every time I hear a doorbell, I crap my pants and quack like a duck for half. I'm sure that has nothing to do. I don't with know. I, her. I, I yeah. asked her. To, she's not returning my calls. So Everybody needs a hobby. <laughs> every, so I don't know. But do you, great do you have a do you have a doorbell sound? On? <laughs> you don't want that in the studio. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the simulation you were looking for. <laughs> Acting. I'm really good at it. All right. So, great okay. times over at patreon.com slash therapy. Oh, my gosh. We have tons of stuff going on, man. We do. Merch yeah. store, merch madness, yes. interview stuff. And um, what was the last thing we were doing? I think that was it. That was it. And the movies. And the movies. movie night. Yeah. yeah, yeah lots yeah. of fun. Yeah, yeah. So, come check us out. All right. Great show. Great show. See you guys next week. Oh, wait, oh, wait. We still got to do these questions, huh? Let's do some of these. All right. This first one, I really like this. So TikTok has become a significant part of my life. Heard of it? Yeah. I send Nick probably two a day. Daily? Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're good, though. <laughs> they I, are pretty. I send yes. you some really good <laughs> I stuff. Am, I am so happy that Jim does not feel comfortable enough with me to send me stuff like that. Is that yeah. an invitation? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, no, you're no. missing out. It's I solid. will berate you if you send me to do that. <laughs> I think he just sends me back pictures of him flipping me off. But no, it's really, really funny. So anyway, uh, I'm sure this uh, question is not about the funny part of TikTok, but I liked it. All right. Uh, TikTok therapy. Hello, other gentlemen of the churn. <laughs> As a therapy producer. Oh, it's boss. Oh, geez. Fix your tie, Nick. We're in the presence, yes. in the presence of the leadership. As a therapy producer, I figured I should execute my right to not only sit in on board meetings, but to also direct some conversation on the show. Absolutely. Yes, you should. I am an elder member of Gen Z, and as such, I'm on TikTok. Well, I'm also on TikTok. I'm not in Gen Z. What is Gen Z? Gen Z is the next ones, after the millennials. That's after millennial? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my kids are Oh, is it? I thought it was before. But the Gen Zs are adults now. Which also, I'm, I'm getting sick of the, the millennial Z mocking. Begins. People are like, oh, millennials. I'm like, millennials are in their 40s. Like, we're not like kids. Like, come on, man. We're still, okay, I should probably read the letter. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> um, I'm an elder member of Gen Z, and as such, I'm on TikTok. For those of you who are fortunate enough to not have your lives sucked into the endless scrolling lifestyle of TikTok, God, that's true. It's a platform for sharing short videos that are tagged and circulated to potential viewers using a really effective algorithm. The algorithm essentially develops a model for you as a person to suggest videos that you would find interesting or might relate to. For a simplified example, if you like a video about WandaVision fan theories, but quickly scroll away from an analysis about why Baby Yoda could potentially be a Sith, TikTok's model might predict that you're a fan of Marvel movies, but not Star Wars. Instead of just giving you all geek-related videos, the algorithm can feed you highly niche content that feels hyper-specific to you. God, that's really true. I've noticed something lately, however, where I feel that the algorithm has diagnosed me with mental health challenges that I didn't previously know about. What? About a year ago. I mean, that's hilarious. That is. (laughs) It's fascinating. (laughs) About a year ago, I started seeing a therapist for anxious feelings because of this show. Okay, I don't know how to interpret that. The show made you anxious? I think it is a good thing. (laughs) That's that's how I think he means it. (laughs) But I never even considered a diagnosis of ADHD or childhood trauma since most of the work that I did with my therapist was solution-focused therapy. The videos of, uh, of note that TikTok fed to me started off with maybe a brief reference to undiagnosed ADHD in a comical sense. Then I started seeing videos just listing symptoms of childhood trauma that I really related to. Oh, he links the videos, by the way. Or videos uh, of TikTok, uh, TikTokers having reactions to conversations they had with their own therapists. And it just kept getting more relatable. I'm a data scientist, and one of my favorite quotes is, All models are wrong, but some are useful. It's very likely that my own interest in mental health started to back feed into the system and caused me to see more and more of these videos. But I could also see that the end results of this experience would be getting more people in to see therapists. I was wondering what your opinions are regarding the impact of technology that it might be having in both shedding the light on and maybe even fully diagnosing mental health concerns in the near and distant future. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Therapy producer Kevin Chamberlain, formerly Reverend Scoop Kevin, but I recently decided to just go by my real name on here and ICS. Good. Good stuff. Also, he gave us a bonus video 
uh, from a therapist on TikTok that feels like exactly the same advice Jacob would give as a life coach. Well, then we're going to sue that I will guy. definitely check that yeah. out. <laughs> sue him for copyright infringement. You will get to knock off Jacob's bit, yeah. but he doesn't have a theme song. Only we profit off Jacob's That's back. Right, as we've discussed in <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> okay, so this is a really good question. This is interesting. So these algorithms, they're really specific, and they've gotten very complex. Yeah. I mean, to the fact where they can... They can tell, you know, things that you're interested in. Like he gave the, a great example of like, it's not just things that would be considered within comic book, right. the world, but like a specific type or, you know, interested in this, but not interested in that. Like right. they're able to be very specific with all of these algorithms. That's kind of scary in a way. Am I concerned at all that, uh, that machines will replace us in, in diagnosing? No. Okay. And here's why. Because all it's really looking at is your interest in something. Ah. Right? Not necessarily that you share those symptoms. Good point. Now, maybe your interest in those videos has to do with the fact that you feel like you share some of those symptoms. Right. And those are interesting to you for that reason. But all it really calculates would be interest. If yeah. You stop scrolling. You watch it. It knows that. Right. You scroll past other things. That's pretty much it. Yes. So I agree with what you just said. And I, I think that there's more to this because there's a greater problem here that I think Kevin's bringing up. And we've talked about it before in the show. Self-diagnosis by just going over the criteria and symptoms. Yeah. So that's another issue, too. Well, I think that's fundamentally what we're talking about. Right? Yeah. No, so, it is. Yeah. yeah. Like there, you see a video. It says, hey, I have ADHD. Here's all these things. And I was actually talking to you guys. This was off tape. Where I was explaining that, you know, there's it's really hot right now for some reason. There's this vibe that's like ADHD is, is super sexy right now. Everybody has it again. And so it's like you're seeing all these Instagram posts that are like, hey, have you ever found yourself tired in the morning? And have you ever needed an extra cup of coffee? And do you are you right handed? And are your eyes? You have ADHD. And it's like everything is being blamed right now on undiagnosed latent ADHD. You know, and it's all this extra stuff. Side effects of ADHD may be, you know, that you don't feel comfortable at your job or whatever. And so it's like all this extra stuff, but ADHD aside, self-diagnosis, I have mixed feelings about it. Right. Like on one hand, mental health diagnosis lends itself to doing this because our diagnostic uh, stuff, the, the materials that we use to diagnose, is a breakdown in a bullet point list almost of very easy to understand ideas. Right. And so it'll say, here's the criteria, which is the actual word that we use to describe ADHD. And it'll have these bullet points. Mm -hmm. And anybody can look that up. And, and this is the WebMD phenomenon where they'll Google their stuff and they go, I have it. And then they'll see a video of somebody that has it and, and explaining what their experience is like. And they're like, oh my gosh, I relate to that. And this is a double edged sword. Mm -hmm. On one hand, I like that we are reaching the place of so little stigma for mental health that people feel empowered to go looking into it for themselves without being fearful and sometimes feel very uh, encouraged and freed to have a word to describe a constellation of patterns that they observe in themselves and that we have things like TikTok that are broadcasting people's stories and, and people are owning it. So on that hand, I'm like, wow, that's that's great. You know, I like that that's where we're at. On the other hand, as, as a therapist, gosh, I'm getting exhausted from having to talk to, I was telling you guys before the show, like 30% of my patients ask me right now if they have something because they saw it on TikTok or they saw it somewhere else or their buddy has it and then they relate to their buddy and they say, maybe I have that too. The problem is that that list of words, that bullet point list of criteria, each one of those words has a book about it. To become a therapist, you had to read a book on each one of those words. So you might see the list but you're not just looking for what that word looks like to the general public. You have a very nuanced and differential understanding of what that word really means, and you know what to look for. And, and there needs to be a higher threshold than just, I relate to it. And this is where the diagnostics of, of mental health words have become very milk toast. And, and I think that we're losing our, our understanding of the power of, of health care and, and the power of treatment whenever we make these things ubiquitous. Mental health words are relatable. Right. Whereas a broken arm is not. You either have it or you don't. And if I said, yeah, I have a broken arm. Oh, my God. Here's my cast. And if you said, Jim, what does it feel like? And I'm like, yeah, it's really achy right here. And you're like, I have aches right there. Maybe I have a broken arm. You would never do that. So right. the rest of healthcare doesn't have that very often. But mental health does a lot. 
You know, like, oh, this guy's generalized anxiety. Maybe I have generalized anxiety. Well, no, like you don't. It's relatable because it's these are human things that are taken to a disorder level. They reach a dysfunction. It reminds me a lot of my uh, – it's like an intro to psych class that I took in college, my undergrad. Mm-hmm. It was like the very first class I remember taking where I switched my major. I was like, oh, I, this is really interesting stuff. I want to do this. Um, and I want to say it was the uh, – would have been the spring semester, or no, fall semester, because we went on break for Thanksgiving. And I remember the professor gave us an assignment, said, all right, you're going, a lot of you are going home for Thanksgiving. Uh, you're going to be around family. We've been talking about the DSM. Mm. At the time, it was the dsm four. Oh, no. And uh, he said, yeah, he gave us an assignment. I want you to find one member of your family, and I want you to give them a diagnosis using the DSM. Right. Oh, okay. gosh. Cool. So I, we did that. That is not where I thought it was going. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to say, you're going to diagnose at least one member of your family. Don't Ignore do that. that. Oh, no, no, no. That would have been no, no. a good professor. No. No, he was a good professer. Oh, I'm sorry to impugn because, his character. Go on. <laughs> because <laughs> when we came back, you know, we, we talked about our diagnosis. He let a few people in the class share yeah. what they had. And he said, okay, great. I'm glad you all had fun doing that. I want you to know that about 98% of you are wrong. Mm. Oh, good. Good. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. That story had a happy ending. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because, and that was his whole point, is he's like, it's You're all idiots. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And he told us on a daily basis, which kind (laughs) of. Started to get a little excessive. (laughs) It's like, all right, got it. Uh, No, but, but, I mean, he made a really good point that, like, there's nuances in these criteria that you need to be familiar with. Yes. And if you're just reading it f- for the first time and you're seeing some of this stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, that's me. Yep, that's me. Yep, that's me. But are you understanding what what these words mean? Right. You know, like, you know, is is uh, is my mood and my affect congruent? Okay. Right. It, do you know what that means? You know, right. and and. And is it so? Can you evaluate that? Do you have right. those schools necess- uh, skills necessary to do so? Right. Um, so it was a really good learning experience for us to kind of humble ourselves and realize, like, oh, we, yes. we it's, it's more than just reading this and using it as a checklist. Right. We have to dig deep into this. And the DSM-5, if you're looking at it, you know, there's kind of the desk reference version that just has the criteria. Yeah. But if you get the full version... Uh, which everybody, if you're studying it, should have the full version because it breaks down prevalence rates. Right. It breaks down differential diagnosis. So how can you distinguish this disorder from a similar disorder? Yeah, and to be clear, you're unqualified to even read that book unless you already went to grad school, right? And, and like, that's, I'm just going to say You're not it. unqualified to read it. You're unqualified to draw conclusions from it. There you go. Fine. You can own one. I'll allow it. <laughs> Jim will allow I'll you. I'll allow you to buy one. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. But no, this is my point. Is like it, and it says in the book, like you know, the the basic reader assumption here is that you've at least attained clinical status, and like that's fine because like you study it in grad school, but you're you still do not have the ability to point at somebody and say, I think they have this. We'll allow you to speak your thoughts, and maybe you're right sometimes because we're training you up. But like I, I don't know, I was talking to this, I was talking about this with somebody else the other day. Um, it's just a colleague, and we were chit-chatting about diagnostics. And we were appreciating together how many people are self-diagnosing right now and how common it's becoming to just throw these words around. And again, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to come off as fundamentally against that because I do think that there's a lot of value to that. I think it comes with awareness. Yes. If you raise awareness, you're go- this is... That is fine. So in that case, it's probably a positive step. It should bring you to therapy, right? Which is great. It's because, a good problem to have. Yeah, we'll put it that way. And you don't need to have a diagnosis to benefit from therapy. So I'm glad you're here. Like clearly, there's a constellation of behaviors that are problematic for you. Whatever word we give that, let's work on it. Let's let's right. feel better, right? And so right. that's fine. But this colleague and I were chit chatting about you know this diagnostic issue, and we were talking about how interesting it is because there's the old, I don't know if this is true. Uh, this is probably apocryphal, but I've heard this, this story that the way that you train, I'm sure it's changed now, but back in the day, the way you trained a banker to spot a, a counterfeit hundred dollar bill was you gave them like a thousand hundred dollar bills and they had to count them over and over and over and over again. And then they'd slip in a counterfeit and the person could just feel the difference because they were so used to the, the normal hundreds, right? They could spot the fake. And they didn't know why it was a fake, but they could tell something was off. And, and that, that analogy is somewhat true of a mental health clinician. In order to achieve the power 
to render a diagnosis. Not only did you go to school and read books, not only did you have to read the DSM-5, which again, you have to even be qualified to read in order to understand it, you then had to spend years of apprenticeship working along real diagnoses and seeing real patients under the tutelage of somebody else who's better at this than you in order to, and then pass national exams in order to finally be trusted to render a diagnosis. And even among a lot of my colleagues, I think they throw around too many diagnoses. Mm -hmm. So I I guess that's where I think that what the writer's asking is, do you think this is problematic? I don't think we're going to be replaced, but I think it's, it's democratizing diagnostics in a way that can be harmful to the public too. Because then people start, just like WebMD can do, like you start walking around believing certain things about yourself or diagnosing your friends and family or posting these things on Instagram that are like, you know, I have this, it's a problem. And it's like, okay, maybe you do, but I don't know. Well, it's the same thing that we've talked about. I've mentioned this before on the show, the whole thing with OCD. Yeah. You know, and and a lot of people diagnose themselves with OCD. Just throw it around. Right. Because, but really it's like you kind of have to look at, is it impacting your life? Like, is it keeping you from having relationships? Is it keeping you from holding down a job? Right. Is it keeping you from functioning? Right. No. Well, then it's not OCD. You have some traits. And I think, I think that's probably the, the thing that I would talk, would explain to Kevin, you know, is if you're, if you're looking at some of this and you feel like some of these things are relatable to you. Right. The only thing I think that you can really say at this point is that you share some of those traits. Yes. Maybe. And then and then if those traits are a big enough issue for you that it's starting to cause problems, it's impacting your functioning, yeah, then that's kind of when you get into therapy and that's when you talk with your therapist. And all you do is you give them the information. And again, like the whole diagnosis thing, like, like Jim said, we kind of get caught up in the diagnosis when really the diagnosis – doesn't mean anything it's right. it's it's for billing purposes it's a way for clinicians to communicate with each other right. without having to go into every one of the symptoms it's kind right. of a shorthand way of communication uh, but ultimately at the end of the day what's most important to you are these symptoms and how you're coping with these symptoms and how you can coexist with the symptoms yes absolutely and, and you know i think it's important for me to say this too like Do I get grumpy about this? Yeah, a little, because I do think it can be harmful. Um, Do you hear me constantly talk about how unimportant diagnostics can be? Yeah. Having said that, anytime you've, if you've been listening to the show for a long time, we've had lots of guests over the years. You've also heard me do special interviews on Patreon. And if somebody tells me that this is their diagnosis for whatever reason, even if that's self-concluded, you'll never hear me correct them or take issue with it. Because I don't care. It's like if they told me they're a Sagittarius. Like, what does it mean to you? Mm-hmm. What is so? Why would you describe yourself this way? Why, okay, so that and that Wait, was so you just always dismiss things that definitely matter. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's where I'm going with <laughs> that's this. That's what he said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's not what I would do, but all right. <laughs> I feel like you should be paying attention to that. Yeah. Zodiac matters. But yeah, like I, I care about the things that they are describing. If they call it by a diagnosis name. I have no interest in dealing with that. It was funny because uh, in, in the next Patreon, I'm going to talk about my new associate therapist. I hired oh, you a did. Ther- did. Oh, this is exciting. It, it is exciting. We yeah. need to meet this person. Oh, yes. I'm going to try to hide oh, this yes. person from you for as long yeah, as yeah. I can. At this point, they are unaware of the podcast, and I'm pretty sure they quit the first day they find <laughs> that, it. So I'm that, really hanging in there. Yeah, that Got to keep this thing buried. That won't last. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, going to yeah. come out eventually. But during the interview process, um, some of the candidates that I interviewed – one of the questions I would ask in the in-person interview is I would give them a case study and I'd, I'd tell them about a patient who walks in and defines themselves as uh, this disorder and tells this person, tells the clinician and my spouse is this disorder. I know it about them. And I think I baited the, the therapist with narcissistic personality disorder. I was like, so the patient comes in and says that their spouse. Because you're so familiar with it. I'm so familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, the patient comes in and says, my spouse has narcissistic you know. <laughs> personality disorder. I know he does. You know, he's a sociopath and he's got the dark triad and all this other stuff. And so I baited the, the therapist I was interviewing. This is not the, the one I ended up hiring. This is a different one. I baited them with that scenario because I wanted to see if they would make the rookie mistake. And they did. And I was like, so what would you do in the first session with this patient? And they were like, wow, well, I think we're going to start with getting out the DSM and showing them what narcissistic personality disorder is because their husband probably doesn't have that. And, you know, they probably also don't have that. And I was like, okay, yeah, so that's not what you do. But that is, I mean, at least the therapist caught that. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing, understand well, that, the, that there, was, there was multiple was traps in the question, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One trap was, yeah, I'm sure they do. Let's diagnose them. And and like part of the case study was I wanted in in the scenario I painted, the patient keeps asking the clinician to confirm for her that her husband, who's not there, has NPD. Oh, right. And so that that was the first trap was, is this therapist going to do that? Sure. That's, that's bad. A, yeah, that's yeah, an ethical Don't issue, do that. Right? Don't diagnose somebody not in the room. But the second trap was, are you going to try to confront the patient too early on this to try to get into some factual debate about the criteria? You're not listening. And the listening. answer is yes, right? You, no, you, do. you don't oh. do that. And, and so like, the answer was, oh. attend to the patient. She's unhappy in her marriage. That's the issue. Yeah. Talk to her about that. If she's using words to help express her frustration in her spouse, follow. Just go. Get get close to this and understand. Anyway, so that I just want to say that as much as you hear me kind of complaining about diagnostics getting a little too willy-nilly, that doesn't mean that I feel it's important to, like, correct everybody and get it correct. Yeah. No, you're wrong. You don't have the third criteria of ADHD. Like, no, whatever. Like, if you empathize and identify as somebody that, you know, understands this and if that four-letter, you know, acronym helps you, mm-hmm. great. Work on it. You know, yeah. work on stuff that's related to that. Yeah. You know, that's fine. And the healthcare providers in your life will help facilitate that. If Absolutely. a doctor wants to give you medicine, they'll offer you some medicine. You'll try it out. If it doesn't work, you'll you'll know. Yeah. And so life will be good. Laura's approaching oh. the mic. Laura's about up. time. Just pull up a chair. Just no, no. Speaking, speak English, though. We don't have that many German <laughs> listeners. <laughs> oh. Go oh, on. God. How, how do I go from there? You should um, get a chair. Closer. Sorry. So my closing thought on all of this, and you guys alluded after to thoughts. it. After thoughts. Yes. After it's thoughts. back. It's finally <laughs> back. You alluded to it, but I just want to say it in words. Um, it's possible also that you weren't quite, you were feeling things, you were experiencing things, and you weren't quite sure how to explain them, how to feel about them. So you started seeing videos of other people explaining exactly what you were feeling, exactly what you were experiencing, made you feel less alone or just or like, oh, there are people out there that are thinking what I'm thinking. I'm, right. not, I'm not weird or whatever. I'm just me, and this is what other people are going through as well. So mm-hmm. also keep that in mind that right. it might just be that you're relating to people a lot more. Which is good. I'm glad that So exists. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to reword it so that it sounds like it's my own. Yeah. So, Nick, what do you think about what Laura just said? You know, I think I think one of the things that happens mm. is, like, with social media, it gives you a way to language it. Yeah. It gives you a way to talk about it. That was nice. You know, I think because Nailed of the it. beard, it added a lot. <laughs> Let me let me just mansplain what yeah, she just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we just put Corningstone back on. I think that's what we need to do. <laughs> this is what I've been trying to get Laura on the mic. On. I've been trying to get her on the mic for the last hour. This is why I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> she crushes. Every time we get her on a mic, she crushes. Boy, weirdly, I I keep alluding to the fact that she's a Nazi. It's about you two are meaner to her than I am. <laughs> I'm not even sure how that works. How did you, how did you uh, one up Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. To reach for the top shelf. Oh. All right, Kevin, thanks for writing in. And for all of you out there, if you're working on side, and I appreciate what Laura just said because I think it, you probably do relate. And man, that's so important, you know? Mm-hmm. And like just to not feel alone anymore and not feel like you, you have, you're the only person on earth that's like this to notice your behaviors in somebody else. God, it just humanizes it. Yep. Which is one of the most important aspects of this. So the technology is great for that reason, but definitely we can lose our way. So. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about conversion therapy. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Smitty Scoop, Jake Schneider, Carolyn Albert, and Kevin Chamberlain. Hey, Kevin Chamberlain. Would you like to sponsor the show and become a Thera producer? You can do so at patreon.com slash therapy. All right. Today's, this week's trivia theme in honor of our Thera producers is Ireland. Ooh. For St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's appropriate. Yes. Wow, we went this long and we did not bring up St. Patty's. I know. Crazy, right? Ireland is the only country in the world to have a musical instrument as its national symbol. What is that musical instrument? If you'd like to join the Thera Producers and make the show possible, you can go to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. Again, that's patreon.com slash therapy. National symbol? I think I got it. I mean... What's our national symbol? Nations have symbols? A symbol. It's the middle finger. It's a symbol. I think. It's a symbol. It's symbols. Oh, it's so meta. Oh those those God. cheeky Irish. Oh, <laughs> good for you, Ireland. <laughs> Damn, that was good. I think it's the harp. 
It is the harp. Wow. Yeah. Do, do you want to know what my real guess was going to be? Pan flute. That feels Irish. Uh, definitely South American, Central American, Peruvian. Uh, but but the harp, Whatever. if you uh, if you ever drink Guinness, uh, that's, 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 oh, why, that's why I got there. That's how you got yep. that. That's absolutely how I got there. Wow. Yep. That's interesting. I interesting, wonder where huh? they showcase the harp. Like, yeah, where, their, where do you see this? It's not on a flag. Maybe it's on their money? Something. Yeah. No, they have the euro. They're on the euro. Okay. Not all of Ireland. Because isn't well, there that part the that... the Republic of Ireland. Yes. I don't know the difference. Yeah. I believe Northern Ireland is on the pound. Yes. Fair. Because ah, okay. that, that's part of the UK. Correct. Yeah, I don't know any yeah. of this. I don't know about places, so... And if you would like to have an argument with someone about whether Northern Ireland should be part of the UK... <laughs> Pod therapy guys at gmail.com. Boy, do we like to Jobin talk about will that? Certainly get back to you. Listen, I don't know anything about it, but I have very strong opinions about it. <laughs> That's so true. And I'm right. Uh, and I'll show you I'm right. Uh, Conversion therapy. This is a this is a pretty big letter here. Okay. My aunt This is not at all a landmine of full of, I know. of a topic. This is gonna <laughs> right. be a big one. So my aunt found out that I'm gay and signed me up for conversion therapy. I'm so afraid of the emotional trauma it may cause me, but I have to go, or else she will out me to the whole community and family, and that is dangerous. Is there a way I can go through this experience stably while protecting my mental health? I'm planning on moving out in the future, but I currently live in a conservative Muslim country, and there isn't that many places to go to seek help. Thanks, Anonymous. So the... Did it say what type of conversion therapy? I think they just mean uh, therapy designed to make somebody not homosexual right. anymore. But I'm, I'm assuming religious based. Does it say anything about that? It's, Conservative I would Muslim so. country. I'm, I'm assuming yeah, religious. Yeah. It's probably it's, woven into what they're offering. I think that's safe. I, I don't know of conversion therapies that aren't religious based. Right. Well, and I remember when I first saw this letter. As I was reading it, I'm thinking the whole time, that's illegal. That's illegal. That's not legal in almost any state. There's federal laws that make this illegal. not in our country. And then it said, I live in a conservative Muslim country. And I thought, oh, wow. Different thing. This this one really upsets me. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Because I think my answer to your question is, can I, the question of can I do this without uh, hurting my mental health, I think my answer to it is no. Gosh, man. So here's the thing. I, here's my thought. I, I don't know how to anyway. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think number one. I guess it's possible, but I don't, I don't know how to. I, <sighs> and that, that, that's upsetting. It, it's very upsetting. It's extremely upsetting. Yeah. Um, number one, your, your, your personal safety is the most important thing right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's um, this so, or you're not, phys- or it, like, if, if not doing this, it puts your physical well-being at risk. Go do it. Yes. Right. I, I don't know what Which country... we have to appreciate. Because right. Because if, uh, yes. if you're outed, you could be in physical danger in some yeah, countries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, just, no, so if that's the case, yep. You got to do, do whatever you need to do to stay alive. Yep. That's, and it might be upsetting and it might be damaging to you. And yeah. you'll deal with those things later after you know what they are. And that's just what that's going to be. Exactly. And that was kind of, that was going to be my next point too. Yeah. Is, you know, if that's what you need to do, if you need to do this conversion therapy and, and that is your best path to safety... Then do it, and then we can deal with whatever those consequences are later. I, I and you think... go through it, and you tell people what they want to hear, yeah. so that you come out of it at the other end, and everybody goes, "Yep, that was successful," and we don't have to worry about this person anymore. Yeah, and then when you have and, a chance, and then you go on and you live your life in, yep. in, in peace and harmony and happiness, and and that's great. Yeah, and then if you got a chance to get out of there, and then and you want to get back into therapy to yeah. address all that stuff, then that's what you do. I mean. Um, here, here's I, th- I think the uh, the really strong piece, the 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 silver lining in all of this, the thing that I don't want to say silver lining, it's the strength, the mm-hmm. thing that you've got that you've got working for you, mm-hmm. and it's going to sound really stupid, but I I kind of mean it. You're obviously listening to this podcast, and the reason why that's a strength is because you it tells me that you've got a connection to a world outside the world that you live in. Good point. Because that is. I think really dangerous when you don't have any access to the outside world, then you start thinking that you're alone. Yep. You start thinking that this problem is about you yeah. and you don't, and, and there's nothing to correct that. Yeah. So that I think is really harmful. The fact that we can talk to you directly and we can speak right into your ears and we can tell you this is normal. Yes. Like this, the, homosexuality is a normal thing and it's not, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. 
Um, you know, and, and, and you're not alone. There's a whole yeah. bunch of people who've had similar experiences and they've been forced by family into conversion therapy and, and they've had, you know, they've been in terrible situations as a result of this. So you're, you're not alone. You're, that you're not a problem. There's nothing there that needs to be fixed. Yep. I think if you just continue to remind yourself that, make as much connection with the outside world as you possibly can to reinforce that, I think you can go into conversion therapy. Like Jacob said, you can tell them what you what they want to hear to get through it for your own survival, mm -hmm. and then we deal with this later once you're in a safe spot. And I'll I'll piggyback on what Nick was saying. I like I like everything Nick just said there. The other big strength that I think you have going for you is you know who you are, mm -hmm. and you know you know that you're not a broken person. You know that you that you are just a, a human being, just the way you are, and that's fine. Right. And you you know that you are a homosexual person. And great. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't affect anybody else other than yourself. And that's 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 you. Mm -hmm. That's your life. Yeah. And uh, and you were aware of that. You're aware of you're aware of the fact that uh, you know th th there aren't aspects of your life that need to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So I have a couple of thoughts on this. Um, the very first one is this: If you are listening to this show and you are horrified by this question and you feel for this listener, I want you to go to podtherapy.net. You can comment on our episodes. I don't think most of you guys know that, but you can just comment on any episode on our website. It lists as a feed. It's a Tumblr. <laughs> when you say something stupid, they know. They know. I usually <laughs> catch it in the Patreon. <laughs> but listener who wrote this, um, I would love for you to go to podtherapy.net and find this episode and I would hope that you would see comments from other listeners all around the world who want to send you a love letter and just tell you that we are with you. And even if you are going th through this scary thing, and even if, if you feel completely alone in your society, and if you feel uh, made to, to uh, be in danger in this situation, and you are doing what you have to do to survive, I hope that you're able to go to that and see comments from other people. There is so much love in this community and the people that listen to this show. They are so compassionate. And I just could see an awesome opportunity for us to be with you through this process, honestly. If you mm -hmm. were able to write this, maybe you can write another one and keep us updated. Maybe sending messages to the outside world and getting our comments and feedback on the episodes that you're giving us to comment on is our chance to create a second dialogue for you. And, and I just hope you know that we're with you. So that piece uh, it was important. I, I want to reflect on what conversion therapy is. Uh, because I think oh yeah I guess we should do yeah that. ubiquitous <laughs> right. in society conversion we're just therapy. caught in our outrage yeah, I know yeah. we're just oh just, absolutely we're five steps ahead of the question on this one <laughs> right. I mean I'm I'm from the the Bible Belt deep South and like yeah. this this is an old old thing in my life and right. it's it's never a pleasant thing yeah thankfully in the United States this has all but been outlawed um, it still exists uh, but now it's illegal which there's a whole I've I've had lots of rants on why that was insufficient and why it actually doesn't cure the problem of, of people still doing this. Cause the people that generally do it aren't licensed professionals. Right. And licensed professionals kind of weren't allowed to do it anyway. You didn't need a law to stop us. We had ethics, mm -hmm. but anyway, if you call yourself a preacher or if you call yourself a life coach, whatever or you like want. that, there's no punishable, there, there's nothing yeah. punishable about yeah. it. And it will probably be a religious institution. Yeah. And it's also in another country anyway. Although, Jacob, the audio guy, is going to tell you to go fuck yourself. Yes. That's always what his advice <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter what that's your problem what, is. That's what's going to happen if you're, if you're practicing conversion therapy. You're going to draw my anger. <laughs> and that will come out. <laughs> so conversion therapy is basically, in a nutshell, um, trying to change somebody's sexuality. It is a very flawed theory, um, even though you might hear this and think, oh, that's just boldly religious. No, it flirted with psychology. Um, there was even a time in um, American psychological uh, scientific history where I believe it was DSM-3. Three. Three. Yeah. Uh, it actually advocated for that, and, and it diagnosed homosexuality as a disease and believed that through the power of therapy we could cure it. That is the idea of conversion therapy, yeah. is that you're going to change this fundamental trait in a human being. So why is it illegal, it, especially in America? Because it is extremely harmful to do to people. Because putting them through that process requires shaming and casting a lot of, uh, of doubt and self-doubt and pain into that person about fundamental traits of who they are. 
The human psyche isn't good at taking that. It also doesn't work. It doesn't do the thing that it's trying to do. Right. Because go figure, you can't. So those make it a very dangerous combination. People that go through this are generally considered victims. We don't like it. Having said that, there's also, and this needs to be said, different versions of conversion therapy. In the United States, most of conversion therapy was talk therapy. There were also camps where people were abused. And there was uh, electronic, uh, elect- electroconvulsive things used yeah. and different kinds of pain therapy, uh, if you want to call it therapy, basically trying to do reductionist behaviorism. In this country where and the writers mental coming abuse. from. And mental abuse. Yeah, yeah certainly mental, uh, mental and physical And abuse. physical abuse. And yeah. sometimes yeah. sexual abuse. Yeah. That was another thing. Uh, I have had patients who have told me horror stories about camps that they were sent to. Uh, where they were a teenage boy and and they you know were uh, discovered to be gay and they were sent to camps and made to have sex with adult women to try to help convert them so that they would and that is rape wow that yeah. is just child abuse and rape yeah so and, I and there's also there was, there were camps of it that were uh, you know we're going to make you scared of sex yes in general oh, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and so there was you. sexual abuse that that w- was uh, paired with painful painful things and and hurting you during sexual experiences yeah and yeah I mean it was it's using psychology it's using ideas in psychology in the worst possible ways yeah. it's it's basically terrorism like it, it's yeah. horrific it's it's torture it's torture. in many ways it's torture. So whatever's happening here, I guess I, I felt the need to explain that little bit because I think that when we read this as a westernized audience, we might be tempted to not fully appreciate what this writer might be facing. Mm-hmm. Now, having said that, the writer did not you know, elaborate on what this is going to look like for the person, only right. that they're going to do it. I, I'd imagine the person doesn't even know the full scope of it. It's probable that it's going to be more like talk therapy. That, that's generally still common, and that's usually what's going to happen. So, to the writer, when you ask, how can I get through this stably uh, while protecting my mental health? The first thing I need you to understand is, you are resilient. You are capable of anything. You have heard people say hard things to you and hurtful things to you throughout your life. What's important is that you know who you are and you remind yourself of that. Also, it is probable that the person you're going to talk to is probably going to be somewhat friendly. That's usually the approach. They don't, you know, come at you with forks and knives. It's not the Spanish Inquisition. They're probably going to try to behave as a therapist would and join with you and get to know you. And I think that you can allow for that. You can allow for the common humanity. Where you're going to have to, you know, kind of guard yourself is where they're going to try to somehow use uh, the religious teachings of your community or some kind of value proposition or some kind of argument to try to make you feel as if you are unworthy or there's something fundamentally flawed about you and that you need fixing. That line of thought in this case is dangerous to you. So how can you get through this in a stable way? I think you can use the same skills that we talk about on this show. I think aside from Nick's point about creating a second community, having a second dialogue, and the other thing is coming back to your authentic truth, reminding yourself of who you are. There's a great book that you might want to pick up. Um, It's called Man's Search for Meaning. It's by uh, a great author and great psychotherapist, Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl survived the Holocaust. And it was his experiences in the Holocaust that gave him the idea for his form of psychotherapy, which he called logotherapy. And his book, Man's Search for Meaning, is how a human being can go through such horrific experiences for who they are and still stay sane, and get through that by latching on to meaning, finding meaning even in pain, finding meaning even in mistreatment, finding meaning even in torture, in his case. And and I believe that that book would give you incredible lessons, and I think that you would find it to be inspiring and give you some great techniques that I believe you could bring into your work there and get through this terrible thing. Mm-hmm. And I would just add, if you do end up having to to go through with this, be very careful. Just be very careful. And um, and, and everything I'm about to say, keep in mind that I am uh, 
I, I, I obviously I am angered by the the, the uh, existence of this thing. Right. Wherever you are, wherever I am, it doesn't matter. I am angered by the existence of this thing, and, and this this hits me on a on a visceral level, and it and it brings back childhood shit for me. Mm. So understand that in what I'm in, in what I'm now going to say. You are if you if you end up having to do this, it is entirely possible that wherever you are while you're doing this. You will be in danger the entire time you are there. Mm. People will be your friends while you're there, and they are not your friends. Right? They are they are lying to you to try to uh, trick you into. It could be. Take, take, assume assume a, a statement of could be in all of this. I, I'm, sure. I'm not a, a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but my my point is: be very very careful. In uh, in what you say to who while you are there? Yes, mm-hmm. like that, yes. and that's it. That, that's that's what I have to say about it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's shitty, and I and I really I really hate it for you. Yeah, but a real sense of danger. You know, we're yeah. talking about some societies that could very much hurt a person or yeah. worse. So you got to get through it, friend. You're gonna get through it. And I want you to, again, go to our episode, uh, go to podtherapy.net. This episode will be up there. Find this episode. Look at the comments. And if you're out there and you want to send love and support to this person, I hope that you'll come down and comment. Yeah. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I did when I when you guys were reading this question is I Googled gay Muslim help. Mm. And I found a few resources. Oh, I don't awesome. know if you're able to do that where you are, but... Google it if you can in a safe place. Keep the organizations in mind. And then also, if if you go through it, also kind of remind yourself that you can be an advocate for other people that will go through what you go through. Yeah. And you might not be able to speak out about it now, but maybe later on in life you'll be able to. It sounds like more and more people are rejecting conversion therapy all over the world. There are some world leaders trying to advocate against it. Mm-hmm. So maybe you could keep in mind that you could advocate for the people younger than you that may have to go through it later. That's right. Great advice. Thank you for that. So and definitely again, look for the resources. Most importantly, your safety is is the number one priority. That's mm-hmm. right. Get through So it. before, after, during any of this stuff, your your safety is the number one priority. Yep. Yes. That's how Viktor Frankl got through the Holocaust. When he was in the internment camp, or not the, inter- the concentration camp, mm-hmm. um, he, he started looking for meaning in his suffering. Yeah. And, and he started telling himself, the reason I'm going through this is because I'm going to help other people. And that's what I'm going to bring to the world. And so everything I'm going through here is a lesson for me so that I can become a great healer. And that was his meaning. For some people, they, they told themselves they'd make a deal with their higher power. In some cases, obviously, the, the people in those camps were Jewish. And they would say, you know, I'm going through this, uh, God, and, and will you make a deal with me that if I go through this, uh, you'll make sure my great-grandchild who's still out there will, will eat today. Mm. And that was important for their, psycho- their, their own psychological you know, uh, fortitude so that they could hold on and believe that they were going to get through the next thing. Mm-hmm. Again, we, we don't want to scare you, you know, listener. I mean, maybe you're thinking to yourself, gosh, guys, you know, I'm, I live in a modern society. You know, they're not going to poke me with sticks here. I'm going to just go sit down. Maybe. Um, but I guess we all just care so much to, to know that you're safe because that's not the case everywhere. Right. You really could be in danger. Yeah. And, and even if you're not, you know, going to be hurt physically, uh, this is all very dangerous psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want you to have to go through it. But it, and as much as we're saying, it is something that you are capable of getting through. Yes. Yes. It's, yes. Just, it's just another thing, and it's people being shitty, and those people are going to be shitty, and let them, let them be their shitty selves. Yes. And you just continue to be you, and you're going to get through it. Yep. Yeah. And know that we're with you, man. Yep. You know, we're with you in spirit. And uh, I hope that, you know, I, I know that our, our folks out there that are in our support community, they are with you. Even if they don't get a chance to drop a comment on this episode, just trust me, everybody that is part of our community is absolutely with you. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to get through it together. And one day you'll look back on this and you'll tell your story and uh, you will authentically be yourself. So, yep. you know, just tell them you have anxiety the whole time. Maybe they'll, they'll be like, well, we got to fix his anxiety before we can fix his sexuality. So, And then just get a whole bunch of CBT about that'll, anxiety. That'll do fine. it. They'll just throw off the scent the whole time. Yeah, it's fine. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Anxiety is a nice red herring. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just use, I saw this TikTok. <laughs> I think I have ADHD. <laughs> or throw red fish at them. Preferably yeah, that also herring. works. <laughs> yeah, the red herring. Red herring. Uh, he's using the old red herring technique. Hey, dog hey. smells. <laughs>
Uh, we're with you, friend. Get through this, and we'll see on the other side of it. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the definitions of mental health. I'm uh, Ron Burgundy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're listening to You know he'll say it if you put it on the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Smitty Scoop, Jake Schneider, Carolyn Albert, and Kevin Chamberlain. If you'd like to sponsor the show and become a Thera producer, go to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. Keeping with our theme of Ireland, our next question is... The passage tomb, New Grange, is estimated to have been built around what year? If you'd like to join the Thera producers and make the show possible, you can go to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. Again, that's patreon.com slash therapy. What, what is a passage tomb? Okay, so New Grange, this is some cool shit. I went to New Grange. Way better than Old Grange, by the way. Let me tell oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Blows it out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Not so even So New close. Grange... It's uh, a passage tomb. Essentially, it's this uh, it's this dome, this huge dome like earth okay. tomb. Okay. With a long tunnel that goes down to the center, and then down in the center, there's kind of like a cross shape where there's little spaces there. Okay. And they used to do like burnt offerings. Is the cross shape intentional? Yes. Like ah, everything is that's intentional. That's going to help me locate this on the timeline. I doubt it, but yeah. go ahead. Ah. Okay. So. W- Cross shape as in crucifix, right? Or no, do you mean as fork in, in the just, road. just fork in the road oh, type, just nah, X three mind. ways. Yeah, yeah. 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 That would have so, helped. I was about to say, that, <laughs> sure, that shape has been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, is it a circle? Oh, oh that oh, helps me narrow it down. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I know circles so didn't exist. Knot, until, that would help. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, shot in the dark, I guess. I mean, it's probably going to be pretty damn ancient. Stonehenge is pretty ancient, right? Yeah, Stonehenge is ancient. Ancient, true. All right. 75. 75 AD. I'm going with 75. I think he means 1975. I mean, oh. no. I meant the thing Nick thought I meant. I think they built it before, while Woodstock was happening. Before or after the Eagles broke up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I didn't think ooh. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to date stamp these things. Wait, this is Ireland. So this is, this is uh, just pre U2. Yeah, yes. yeah. Where's Bono in this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going uh, AD 100. AD 100. Yep. I I have no idea. 100 years Under into... or over? Just under. Uh, uh, pre, Pre-gym. Pre, pre, pre-gym. Yeah, oh, pre-100 AD. That's like okay. most of human I think, history. I think BC. He just got like 15,000 okay. years he I'll, can I'll run with. I'll guess like 600 BC. Okay. Both of you are uh, at least uh, 2,700 years off. Great. Okay. 3,200 BC. All right. Oh. So, Closest... It's <laughs> yes. yeah. I think by the Price it's is Right actually, rules, he is the winner. Because no, I think we both went over Coast making it. Oh, making yeah, it yeah, older yeah. than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. Wait a minute. It was thirty two hundred BC. Yes. You you guessed sixty five hundred BC. No, yeah. I guess six hundred BC. Six hundred. Oh yeah. We both yeah, yeah. lost. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I said it was before when you said. And yeah. then I just, and then I just threw out six hundred okay. BC. Copy. But what's dang? What's, that's what's old. amazing? You, if you ever get a chance to go to Ireland, oh, here you we go with your pretentious travel stories. Oh, I'm allowed. A, uh, I'm allowed to be a little pretentious. I get it. Being on the show with you, You've gone. Places. Okay, it's I got so cool. I get a little bit. Tell us about the Blarney Stone. Okay, but this place is really cool. Yeah. Okay, because it it's it's lined up. So that on this on the winter solstice, because it's so deep, sunlight doesn't get to the center. Uh huh. Except for about fifteen minutes wow. on the morning of the winter uh, the winter solstice. Jeez. As the sun just barely peeks over, that su- it's it goes lined all up. the way down it the goes tunnel, all the way to the end. Oh. Wow! And so they have a lottery. You can put your name in there, and every winter they'll draw because you can only fit like ten people in there. Oh, if the... so they'll draw names, and if your name pops up, you get to be one of the people that gets to go there on the and winter solstice that? and actually see. It. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, it's, gosh, man, it's pretty amazing. Ancient engineering is incredible. It's amazing. I know, oh, yeah. and I can't hang a bookshelf <laughs> like that's what's <laughs> so built crazy. Built in IKEA. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the instructions are right there on the glucose pocket. If I had to line up my TV stand with the sun light on the winter solstice no forget it no <laughs> i put my tv on the wall backwards the other day <laughs> just staring at the back of the set no clue what's going on jesus great uh great uh piece of trivia there fun Nick. facts fun fact i like it all right quick question uh need a definition it says 
I am on a waiting list to be seen, but this is starting to interfere, so I want to do research while I'm waiting. What is it called when you have sadness wash over you? Is it like remem- or it is like remembering a loved one who died, but there is no memory being triggered when the sadness washes over me. I let it wash over me. It feels like it's going to bring tears. It only lasts for about five to ten minutes, and then I go on with my day. Thanks, Anonymous. Okay. Yeah. Quick little question. Quick question. Hmm. So, some possible causes behind this? Yeah. It could be because you're human. Yeah. That, that could be part of it. So it is, just, it is a common thing. It happens, yes. Yeah. It's very common. Now there's... But unprovoked sadness just happens. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it does. Sometimes it just kind of happens. It just kind of washes over you. It, yeah. It, it, it could also be because of uh, uh, if you're tired, yeah. food that you're eating, exercise could have an effect, hormones could have an effect, yeah. current events like stress could have an effect. Yeah. But here's something also that I wanted to bring up too is that if it... Because the writer kind of talks about it being like losing a loved one or remembering a loved one. Yeah. So if we're if it is actually tied to grief, there's something really interesting about this uh, that I learned about recently. Um, Hope Edelman wrote a book talking about this and talking about what's called new old grief. Hmm. Okay. So there's old grief, which is kind of like a response in the present to a loss in the past, right? It's what we typically associate with as old grief. Mm -hmm. Like something happens that reminds us of somebody. But then there's this thing that we talk about that's called new old grief. And that's when we experience an old loss, but in a new way. Yeah. So instead of like a song coming on the radio that reminds us of somebody, that's kind of that old grief. But uh, going into a new uh, stage of life, Mm -hmm. like say getting married, so there's nothing about marriage necessarily that reminds you about that person, right. but it's a new stage in life that kind of triggers you to think about that old person. Okay. Right. Or being the same age as somebody was when they died. Dying, yeah. Right. That or any of those things that happen. It's just kind of a new way of processing an older emotion. Okay. Um, but that's specific to grief. And it sounds right. like the writer doesn't necessarily talk about that. But, but good, good point though. Right. I'm glad but you brought it up. It, it's something to kind of think about. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it might also be interesting to kind of talk about this, to distinguish it from depression, because sure. that might also be something that the writer's kind of inferring. Like, is it, is right. this something I need to be worried about as far as depression? Yeah. Anything like that. So I, I guess the first thing I would say, writer, is diagnostically, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain here to see if I've ever, if there's a word for this feature, I mean, you might want to refer to it as a spontaneous mood swing. Yeah. You know that that could be it. It depends on how severe it is. I mean, I think it's just it's a, but it's, it's intermittent a sadness. feeling. Yeah, it's, it's, there you go. But it's, it's a feeling. It's not associated with any cognition. And so the writer's right. not saying I get lost in a thought spiral. I start to think bad things or whatever. It's literally just a the physical the physicality of an emotion, right? right? Where you just feel that sunkenness and that drop. So it's interesting because I guess one thing I'm I'm curious about, I'm glad you're getting help, right? So let's acknowledge that. I'm glad you're on a waiting list. I'm wondering what the assessing therapist is going to say if this is something that's profound. I mean, if it's just something you've noticed and it's this quirky observation, no big deal. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Not nobody cares, but it's not going to be relevant. It's not going to be a big deal. But I'm curious because I wonder if it might be associated with something like blood sugar or, or something. You know, you mentioned diet. Yeah. Um, it could be something, you know, metabolic in that way. I, I would wonder if a psychiatrist have an opinion about it. Also, this invites us to ask the question, do we need to fix everything? Exactly. Sometimes no. You know, sometimes it's it does. How long does it last? Five to ten minutes. Uh, and then I go on with my day. Excellent. So, you know, and I don't think the writer's telling us, hey, this is this is causing real problems in my life. I think they're just asking out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. I'd call it a mood swing. You know, I guess I'd call it, you know, or what you called it, intermittent sadness. Yeah. I think that's fine, you know. I, it's even hard to call it a mood. I don't know that. It, yeah, I don't yeah, know that's appropriate. It's, yeah. I think it's almost, it does feel more experience. like just kind of. A, a mood is, is something through which you see the day. Right. Uh, this is something happening to you. Right. So it's like a drop, you know. Like, gosh, I want to reach for like antidote. It's not that. It's, yeah. Yeah, but but I, I so, sounds like so, hypoglycemia, honestly. right? Yeah, it know. does kind of have that like uh, a biological component to it. But I so I guess. Oh, by the it, way, though, if you're playing Jim's neurotic bingo, I have this. <laughs> okay, is that on the? Card? I should have led with that. I need to make yeah. a T-shirt. We need a word okay. for this. Yeah. We'll have a naming contest. There we go. I think that somebody can come up with a clever like. It needs it needs like a, a really like oversimplified funny name. 
you like that that like minimizes it in a cheeky kind of way. Yeah, get it's out a, there. It's a gym meets. thing. It's a gym thing. It's there not. you go. But what do you do about it? I, I, I think I can minimize stuff for Jim. <laughs> Sudden Jim Pression. <laughs> I think flash. Oh, like if flash it's... flooding. Maybe like flash sadness. Okay, I'm gonna keep working Great. on it. Go yeah, ahead. You go ahead with your thought. I'm gonna sit keep, here. Keep work goodness. Keep to, workshopping. Yeah, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit over um, here and work on this. I, I think what you do from here, I mean, it really sounds like it's just something you're curious about. It's not really uh a big hindrance in your day. So I guess how I would probably advise you to deal with this maybe is just to kind of let yourself experience it without expectation, without meaning. Um, when it happens, it sounds like you know you're okay. So it's not anything that's causing you anxiety about having this sadness. I would say just kind of allow yourself to be curious about it, to be observant of how it how it leaves you just as inexplic- inexplicably as it arrives. Uh, but also don't be fearful of it. Yeah. You know, um, just, just kind of be curious. Okay. This is interesting. This is how I'm feeling. But also I, I again, I want to reiterate, be observant of how quickly it goes, mm. right? Because I think that's important too. Cause sometimes we, when something hits us, we get so anxious about it happening that we don't pay attention to it leaving. Whereas reinforcing that idea of, oh, this is going to be here for 10 to 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. I know what's happening because it's happened before. It's going to leave. And it kind of helps take some of the power away from it. Mm -hmm. Spontaneous, effective despair. Sad. Huh? Sad's already used for seasonal affective disorder, but that's fine. Don't monopolize it. I I don't see a patent. I'm sorry. Gosh, it. <laughs> Got hit we're with a chip. To be, Came out of nowhere. <laughs> we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be re, uh, reinforcing like flurry things, over here. Right. Well, nah, writer, it's an interesting list. thing. It's an interesting thing. No, he started. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah he's he off started. COVID came off of it today. Yeah, came oh, yeah. off it today. I actually need to check the score because we were up two zero whenever I walked into Knights the studio. One. Yeah, we're five one. Knights one. Knights one. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. All right, good. Now we can get back to the writer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hang in there, writer. Go see a therapist. Don't be alarmed. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's just a sudden, effective despair. It's a burst. It needs, don't, it needs like a don't burst sweat sound. It. Yeah. Don't sweat it, Burst I think, sadness. Burst Yeah, I think I think just just, uh, just ride the wave. Explosive. Just low sadness. Just like surfing, it's going to come out. It's going to leave. Just ride the wave. Uh, be curious about it. Uh, we are now taking name okay. suggestions in this new naming contest. Winner will... From here on out, every time Jim tries to name something, I'm throwing something heavier at him. We want to Ooh, thank our Thera producers at the end of this show. You can go something to patreon.com <laughs> slash therapy and join our club. Uh, we don't have any newbies to thank? I feel like... Oh, because oh, they're, they're, the they're on the other episode. script. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me pull that up here I'll real stop. quick. Da, 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 <laughs> Play me off. All right, here we go. We got some new Thera pals. Uh, oh, crap. I should have let you read these. Uh, Matthias Van der Brunt. Drop me, yeah, Matthias. Van Br- Is this Van all Br- one Brandt. name? Yeah, Matthias Van Br- Brandt. Nick is almost I got through it. the Van Br- first name. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias Van Br- Brandt. Okay. Matthias Laura's Van bailing Brandt. you out. Brand- Van Br- Brandt. Van okay. Br- Brandt. Like my version. The T car. Yep. Really? You needed her to say T car? She's already here. Oh, she is. And the new theropod? Is Nate McLaughlin nice? And a new pterodactyl, Robert Ward. Robert Ward. Oh my God! I'm so sorry, everybody. You're doing great. And the new Thera producer is Richard Macy and Ezekiel Lawrence. Make her read all the Thera producers. Hey, now I got it. And we especially want to thank our bosses, the Saccharin 16, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminami members of our family. Put Laura club. back on. The, th- the Thera producers. We want Laura. Thank you, Smitty Scoop, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr., Mint, winner of the shoes, Kayla Lansbury, Elio Dare, Judy Schneider, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Dr. Ben, Dawn, Crazy Manana Scoop, Mason Miller, Scott Jamison, Carolyn Albert, Leon Kassab, Kevin Chamberlain, Malaya, Richard Macy, and Ezekiel Lawrence. Can we just like start having Laura just tape from home? reading all these people like that would be a great for drop care. at the end of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah she does okay. really good pronunciation i'm fine yeah. with that she's I the only no person problem. in history to get ulrica on the first try i know yeah she just walked right in and just slammed it down yep. and ulrica's on twitter like my god it finally happened the germans are very detail oriented <laughs> 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 nailed it if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited and enjoy our spontaneous side projects go to patreon.com therapy and thank you for supporting mental health 
That's all the time that we got for this week's session. We want to thank our landlords, Matt and Matt and Lee's Ice Cream Social, and thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something you should keep all to yourself. Share this episode with someone who needs it by going to the episode's description in your podcast app and copying and pasting the links provided into your social media. Don't forget, you can find us at facebook.com slash podtherapy, on Twitter at podtherapyguys, and at patreon.com slash therapy. If you want to submit a question to the show, ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangeman. I'm Drop the Mic Sadness. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next that, week. That one pretty much works. Oh, he's right? looking for something. He's out of chips. He's looking for I something. win! I won the game! Oh, a cactus! Oh, God, it's a cactus! <laughs> I forget that he has, like, machetes and knives over there. I should always recycle his chips. It's very dangerous. We should have Laura do the whole outro. She should just do, like, a thing where she, or or just the outro. Maybe that would be nice. She could do, like, a, that could be our drop at the end. I think the phrase you're looking for is earn her keep. Yeah, there it is.